So what species of quail should you raise? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another slightly rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're talking about what species of quail you might want to raise if you're thinking about raising some quail. There's lots of different types out there. Um, often when I tell people I'm raising quail in my backyard, they just automatically assume it's Bob White, which it's not. But I'm going to talk about the different kinds of quail out there. Now again, this video is more about the different species. I, if you're looking at just Caternix quail, which is primarily what I discuss in my channel, um, and you're wondering what type of Caternix quail should you raise, I've done videos on that already. I will put a link up here, and uh, you can go watch that video, and it'll talk about the different you know types of Caternix quail. But I'm talking this video about the different species of quail, and I'll touch on Caternix, of course. So the first one I want to talk about is the king quail. What you might probably hear referred to most often as button quail. They're also referred to as Chinese painted quail. There's a couple of other names for them. They're a pretty small bird. They're native to Asia, Oceania, a couple of those places like that. And uh, they're, they're very common, um, aside from Caternix quail, in the United States. For, for one reason, they don't require any kind of permits to raise, and neither do Caternix. Um, so because they're not a native bird to the United States. It, I should say, if you live in the United States, they don't require any kind of permits to raise them. Uh, but they are a pretty small bird. They only average just a couple of ounces, 1.52 ounces, somewhere right around in there. Very pretty bird. Uh, they mature in about 8 to 12 weeks. But there are a couple of reasons why these might not be a good fit for you. First of all, if you're looking to raise eggs or something like that, or to produce eggs, I should say, or something like that, they're very, very tiny eggs. They do mature quickly, so they start producing eggs pretty quickly, but you're not going to get a huge egg production out of them just because the eggs are so incredibly small. They're also very timid birds. They don't really do well with a whole lot of extra handling. That may or may not be a big deal to you if you don't plan on handling your birds a lot. They can do just fine. Another thing to consider with these birds, though, is that they are native to warmer climates, so they don't tend to do very well with cold temperatures. You might be able to tell by my uh, attire today, it's pretty cold here in southwest Missouri today. So your button quails, if you plan on keeping them outside, you live in an area that gets cold in the winter, probably not a good choice for you. They do well indoors, they do well in warm climates, and they're most often kept as like pets, because they are a very pretty bird, something really cool to kind of look at. All right, so let's talk about probably the next most common type of quail to be raised, and that's Bob White quail. There's a couple of reasons why people raise Bob White quail. One is to reintroduce them into the wild because their numbers in the wild have really been declining. Uh, but some people do raise them as a meat source. Now, there are a couple of things about Bob White quail that make them different than the uh, Caternix or the button quail. First of all, they're a New World quail, which is just a little different type of species for that. The rest, most of the rest of these birds I'm going to talk about are New World quail. They are native to the United States. That means that they are going to require a permit for you to raise them. And they can be incredibly aggressive when you keep them confined. It's really best to keep them in pairs during the breeding season. The off season, when they're not breeding, you can keep them in groups and coveys. But when they are breeding, they tend to get incredibly aggressive, so it's really best to just pair them off, keep the male and female together, uh, so you don't have any problems with them fighting with each other or any of those kinds of things. You can keep groups of males together, you can keep groups of females together, but again, if you want to breed them, it's really best to keep them in pairs during that breeding season. They also take a little bit longer to mature than some of the old world quail do. They take about six months to get to uh, egg laying to mature. So they're egg laying, they're reproducing, and those kinds of things. So that's a long window there. If you're prepared for that, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to raise Bob White, go for it. Uh, their size is, it varies quite a bit. There's several different types of Bob White quail. Uh, some of the smaller ones, the, the just the regular old Bob White quail, usually are, range around six ounces or so. Uh, but the uh, larger ones, what are called Georgia Giants and some of those kinds, they will uh, top out somewhere around 16 ounces, so a pretty good sized bird. They're probably not your best choice for meat and egg production if that's your primary goal because they do take so long to grow out, about six months again, and they, take, they don't uh, produce eggs nearly as consistently as some of the other birds that we're going to talk about. But if it's something that you want to raise, if you're looking at reintroducing them into the wild or something like that, by all means do it. Just again, no, you do need a permit in order to do it. You can get that usually through your local fish and game, conservation department, somebody like that. It's not terribly difficult to get, but it is a requirement. Don't try to do it without it because you could face penalties if you do. 
All right, another species of New World quail that some people keep is a Gamble's quail. And these are pretty distinctive birds. They've got that little tuft on their uh, forehead. You can see pictures of them here. But they are a, a very pretty bird, native to Arizona, New Mexico, parts of Texas, uh, Colorado, I think California as well. Uh, because they are a native bird, again, they are going to require a permit in order for you to raise them. They're very similar to bobwhites. They do tend to get aggressive if you don't keep them in pairs during the breeding season. That's your best bet with them. Also, they take about six months to mature as well. Um, again, they're a bird that uh, you, most people that are raising them are raising them because they are a pretty bird. They, want, they just want something unique, something a little bit different. Or they're raising them to release them into the wild to help repopulate the population in the wild, which is something you can definitely do. But again, need a permit to raise these as well. All right, another species of New World quail that's not really all that common is a mountain quail. These are very pretty birds, very unique. They're in the mountainous regions of like Colorado, Wyoming, that area, native to the United States. So again, need a permit in order to raise them. They can be pretty difficult to raise actually. Uh, the babies do require usually hand feeding until they learn how to feed on their own. So they're not as easy as some of the other birds. But other than that, they're very similar to the Bob Whites or to the Gambles quail. They take about six months to mature. Um, they can be aggressive if you try to keep them in more than just pairs during the uh, breeding season. So that's your best bet with them. And uh, let's see, what else about them? Oh, they are the largest of the native quail to the United States. They average around nine ounces when they're fully mature. And uh, just kind of a unique little bird. Very, kind of hard to find. You don't see very many people that, that uh, actually have them for sale where you can actually purchase their eggs. I do happen to have a viewer that raises both gambles, or excuse me, mountain quail and uh, Montezuma quail, I believe. Anyway, I'll put a link in the uh, description down below. You can go to his Facebook page, see lots of videos, lots of different uh, pictures of these birds. Um, he's got some information on how to raise them and he also sells these birds. They're a little bit more expensive than your regular birds because again, they are a little bit unique. And finally, one more is the blue scale quail. These are a unique looking bird that are native to extreme Southwest United States into Mexico, that area. Uh, pretty hard to find. You're probably not going to have good luck finding these birds for sale anywhere near you. Uh, but they're very similar to the Bob Whites too. They, they average about the same size. They grow out about the same rate. Takes them about six months to mature. Again, can be fairly aggressive. Need to be kept in pairs during the breeding season. A little bit difficult to keep in captivity. You, they need some special care. You need to keep a really close eye on them. Not nearly as hardy as some of the other birds. But they are a unique bird. And if that's something you're looking for, then by all means, Look for them if you can find them. Go for it if that's what you want to do. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about is the Coternix quail. These are the birds that I raise here. And uh, let me just open up the hutch here. We'll show you kind of what they look like. I have, there's many different kinds of uh, Coternix quail. These are just standard brown jumbo pharaohs. Uh, let me open up this side right here. We'll see if we can get them out there to uh, get a good shot of them. All right, here we go. Hopefully you can see these birds in here. Let me spook them out there a little bit. Go on, guys. Go on, guys. Go on. Go on. Let's get out there. All right, you see them kind of running around in the cage right there. Well, you got a little bit of a shot of them anyway. All right, the thing about Coternix quail, these are um, also known as Japanese quail. Uh, there's a couple of different names for them. These birds are probably the most common that people keep in captivity. Um, they keep them for meat and for egg production. They are incredibly reliant egg layers. They lay about an egg a day as long as they have 14 hours a day of light. You can keep them laying all through the winter time if you want to. Uh, you can keep them in big groups like this. Uh, really only need one male to about every four to five females. So they make a great backyard option. They mature incredibly fast. Eight weeks old, they're going to start laying eggs. They're going to start, uh, uh, you can incubate the eggs. You can start producing. They're going to be ready for the freezer at eight weeks old. So they're a very good backyard choice for meat and egg production. Some of the bigger birds, the jumbos, they average somewhere around 10 to 12 ounces. So you don't get a huge meat yield out of that, but it's enough to make it worth raising them for some meat as well because they do grow out so incredibly fast. So I've pretty much kind of covered, you know, the different types of quails. You may have been already able to determine which kind it is that you want to raise, but let's run through kind of the highlights of that real quick. If it depends really on what your end goal is with the quail as to what type you want to raise. If you're looking for a reliable source of meat and eggs from your backyard that won't drive your neighbors crazy, that can withstand the cold, that, that are very hardy birds, Coternix is the clear choice. They're, they are the absolute best for that purpose. That's really what they are. 
If you're looking for more of a pet, something that you can uh, have in your house and you don't want to keep a ton of them, you might get a little bit of an egg production off of them. Um, then definitely probably the button quail or king quail. And I should say, those aren't really a true button quail. There is a quail that's called button quail, but that's a common name for them. When you hear people talk about button quail, that's probably what they're talking about is king quail. But they're a pretty little bird. They make a great little house pet. As long as you don't handle them too awful much, they're going to do just fine being kept in your house, just like a canary or parakeets or any of those kinds of other things would be kept. And if you're looking for something exotic, then go for one of the other species, the, uh, the mountain quail or the Montezuma quail. Incredibly pretty birds. They're unique. Not many people keep them, so it's something that is a good talking point, something that is you know, different from what everybody else keeps out there. They're just going to be primarily kept for just that reason, just because they're unique, just because they're cool, and that's what you want to raise. They're not really going to be a good, reliable source of meat and eggs for you, and they're really pretty expensive birds. So that would be a good choice if you want to get into the business of selling quail. One of those birds like that, they go for quite a bit of money, so a lot more than a Caternix or a Button, which typically sell for 4 or $5 a bird, something like that. These birds are going to go for a higher price, so that would be a good choice for you if you're looking to uh, get into something where you can actually make a little bit of money off of it. So anyway, hopefully I cleared a few things up for you. My, like I said, my channel has been primarily about how to raise quail. Most of the things I talk about in here are going to apply to pretty much any of those quail that you, uh, that you raise. But uh, my channel is pretty much about Caternix quail. So I thought I'd share with you guys some things, you know, maybe a little bit different than what you see normally, the different types of quail that are out there, and let you know there are some different types out there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, God bless.